Oprah story starts, I don't know, a number of years ago. <laughs> it's hard to remember where things started for me. Um, I remember sort of hearing about yoga and being interested in it, but really not a lot of studios in the area I was in, or maybe I just didn't know they were there. But I remember buying the yoga deck, that little package of cards that was first out there on the market. It was an easy way to kind of break into yoga for me. I could do it whenever I wanted and my schedule was kind of crazy. So I laid out all these cards. I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea of sequencing. I just put down cards and I would lay them out in a row and I would just practice on the floor. I remember they had like the breathing techniques and they had some guided meditations at the end and I would just, I really loved those meditations at the end. Those were super amazing. And the thing I remember the most about that experience was that I always felt so focused and so in touch with myself and the world around me. And it was a really beautiful experience. And I needed that. I needed that at the time. I was in my third year of law school. I was about to get married, just bought a house, and it was a crazy time. So a lot of things going on at the time and I, I really needed yoga to ground. Fast forward a few years, I have a friend say to me, you know, how about, how about we go to the gym yoga class? Come with me. I don't want to go by myself. I don't want to go. And I hadn't done a whole lot between then. I think I'd sort of played with the cards a little bit more, but I really didn't know about sequencing or how to plan it out. And it just, it felt better, but I still felt like I needed some guidance. So went to our first yoga class together and I remember feeling completely excited and really lost because I had no idea what the names of the poses were. I didn't know how to get into them or out of them. And she was doing the best she could. I, I had very little understanding of how to transition. It was my first time really experiencing kind of a flow style class. Previously, I'd been on cards. I committed to coming back. And as I'm about to walk out the door, um, one of my still friends now, who's a yoga teacher as well, says to me, you should come to the Wednesday class. It's amazing and she's amazing and the teacher's just really amazing. You should come. And so, how can you say no, right? I came to the Wednesday class and she was and is truly one of the most amazing teachers in my life. Um, such a Zen experience about her, such a softness, such an accepting nature that you felt like a better person just being in the room with her. And community, that's my first yoga community, was they saved spots for me, they kind of made me feel better, they helped me understand the poses and get into the flows, they waited for me in, outside the classroom, and I just loved that. I think that was probably the most important thing to me at the time. I, um, my son was maybe six months old, I had two small children at home. I was still, had baby weight, and there were mirrors all over the room. And I remember that she used to say, just stop looking in the mirror. Think about how that pose feels to you. Close your eyes and sink into the pose and experience it from the inside out. Don't worry about how it looks. And she was never about like this perfect alignment that matched a book. She was about feel it, feel this pose, experience it for yourself, really absorb it. I was with her for several years, um, a couple of years, and then I found a local studio that taught restorative yoga. First time doing restorative yoga, I thought, and I'm sure those of you who've done restorative yoga know how this feels, the first few times you do restorative yoga, they hold the poses so long that you think they left and went to go get lunch. You're sure that they have abandoned you and you are all alone and everybody's gone home. I remember feeling so vulnerable yet so strong in restorative poses in a restorative class. And it became my favorite class. Um, that was a vinyasa flow, a slightly heated studio. It was about 85 degrees and about 90% humidity, give or take. And I brought my yoga community from the gym with me because I could not stop talking about restorative. And I brought that first teacher who I loved so much with me to the studio as well. And she started working there teaching a few classes. I was there for a couple of years, moved, and I think my biggest, most important thing when I moved was, biggest concern, will I find a community like I've had for the last 
three and a half years. Where? Where do I find that? And I try different studios. I, I live in a really small town in Texas called Fate, about 35 minutes outside of Dallas. So unless I wanted to drive into Dallas, there wasn't a lot of choices out here. And I tried a couple of studios. I just didn't feel that, that warmth, that connection, that um, closeness. And so I determined that I was gonna build it. I was gonna make that community happen and uh, began teaching classes really focused on finding what nourished you, giving you the chance to really settle into the poses, uh, always interested in safety, very concerned about safety. Uh, for me, alignment is, is not alignment for alignment's sake, it's alignment for safety's sake. And as long as people were safe and you weren't gonna hurt yourself, I let you kind of find your way. I, I gave you some ideas and I led you through a practice and I offered restorative and flow and slow flow. After a period of time, I had people that were with me for now, some of them have been with me for almost four years. And they, since I moved my studio home to my home studio, they've come with me. And I have this small group of about 10 to 12 people who are committed to animal causes, which is very important to me. You've seen all the cats, probably makes sense. And very committed to world peace, helping the world, reaching out, being an active part of your community, and also very committed in, in taking care of themselves, self-care, self-awareness, growth, personal growth, and better health. And we've sort of built this, this community that is just supportive and beautiful and amazing, and I could not be prouder to be a part of it. But for me, yoga has so much going on. It was never about the physical postures for me. It felt really good to stretch out and get physically fit and, and to feel more fit and to be able to get into poses over time that I never could at the very start. But for me, it was how I felt when I left. That sense of quiet and peace and support and acceptance. So, such a close knit of feeling and teaching for me, that's what it's about. It's about nourishing you mind, body, and soul so that when you leave, you don't just physically feel better. You're not on like the yoga physical high. You feel amazing and you want to be a better person. You are a better person. The best in you has been drawn out and that is what yoga for me April Walker at the Yoga Ranger Studio is all about. And I am committed to bringing that, producing that, giving that and sharing it with as many people as I possibly can. So if you are interested in that kind of community, I urge you to join the YouTube channel, the Yoga Ranger Studio. Join me in meditation, slow flow practices, connecting to your breath, connecting to your body, connecting to that deeper part of yourself that is meaningful. Thanks so much.